Hey guys, what's up? It's Jen. I am coming at you again today with another CSF leak diagnosis update. I feel weird calling it a CSF leak diagnosis thing because, again, this is not a definitive diagnosis that I'm after, but it is the path that we're on right now to try to explain some of my weird symptoms. If you're new here, it's been about five years that I've been symptomatic with chronic migraine and about two years that I've had POTS. Please do dig through my channel to see more about what my life is like, but the basic rundown right now is that I'm trying to get to the bottom of maybe if there's something underlying that could be causing all the symptoms that I'm having because even though those are the diagnoses that I've been given, I don't totally fit just those bills. Like I definitely have chronic migraine and I definitely have POTS. But there's also some weird stuff that's happening that just does not fit the puzzle. Not going to get into those details now. Go back on my channel. I've been updating you guys pretty much throughout the whole story. Also, there's a whooshing going on in my head, and it's really distracting. And it's kind of giving me pain, and it's making it really hard to film. But I'm going to try to film right now anyway. I have my notes. My precious notes. A majority of the reason that I want to update you guys is because it's been a couple of months since I've said anything about this. But with this update, I want you to kind of pay attention to the timeline and how much time is just getting wasted and how little progress we've made in the last year because this is what keeps happening to chronically ill people. There's this horrible thing where stuff gets put off, they won't do imaging, they will do imaging, they won't do imaging. The doctors can be very wish-washy about whether or not they want to diagnose you. Most of the time, at least for my symptoms, if I say certain things, they're like, oh, it's just migraine. Or if I say certain things about my POTS, they're like, oh, you're just anxious. And it's like, yeah, okay, random palpitations can totally make you anxious, but that doesn't mean that the anxiety is what's causing the palpitations positional anxiety, positional allergies that'll be cured with physical therapy. Like, you guys have no idea the ridiculous stuff that these doctors have said to try to explain away my symptoms and tell me that all I need is to take these pills. Already on tangents. This is going to be a tough video. If you've never been chronically ill, you're probably like, are you serious? But yeah, this is real. So this is an update video, but it's also a like, what the heck video? And just so you know video. I think this will certainly be validating for those of you who are chronically ill and going through the same thing, and it'll be enlightening for people who are not chronically ill, who are used to like, oh, my arm hurts, go to the doctor. Your arm's broken, put a cast on it, and then you leave, and everything's fixed. Once you're complicated, they tend to give up. Once you're complicated, they tend to just push medicant, but medication plus medicine is medicin. Let's get going with this update. Last September was when a follower sent me a message on Instagram and said, you know, you kind of fit the symptoms of a CSF leak. Have you considered maybe looking into that or have your doctors mentioned anything like that? Most of the time, the advice that I get doesn't actually fit because you guys only know the snippets that I share on here. But this one, I dug in a little bit more and I was like, oh, there might actually be something to this. So there are things that you can do with like a glucose meter, with a halo test, things you can do at home to see if maybe a CSF leak could be your diagnosis. So when I did those tests, it seemed like a possibility, so we started down that path. That was last September. It's now July. We've made so much progress. In September, I was pregnant, so we got an MRI of my brain in October, but we couldn't do contrast. Shh, don't interrupt my video. I had the baby at the end of December, and I went in for my MRI with and without contrast in February. February 2021, so we're now five months ago. I did that at the request of a neurologist that I got in contact with in January, trying to explain this whole situation and letting her know that I wanted to explore this route if they thought it was a good route to explore. Now this lady neurologist is the person who's in between me and a CSF leak specialist, a real specialist, like one of the big names. So I was like, all right, if I talk to this lady, she can let me know if I qualify, she can talk to the CSF leak dude, and then we can get the ball rolling that way. In March, I had the appointment with her and she recommended doing the 48 hour flat test, but because of me having the newborn and everything and needing to plan everything ahead with, are we starting to stutter? Needing to plan ahead because we have the newborn, it took me until April to perform the 48 hour flat test. I vlogged that 48 hour flat test and it ended up being positive, meaning my symptoms are positional. That's one of the huge indicators that it could be a CSF leak. Yeah, I'm stuttering. 
POTS is positional, but it's cardiac and other autonomic things that get affected by POTS. Migraine is not positional. I have complex migraine that shares a lot of the symptoms of CSF leaks, but I get those complex migraine symptoms even when I'm not in migraines. And with this test, we found out that it was really just due to positional changes. So, ding, 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 ding. The doctor was like, um, I think her wording was, it does seem like your symptoms are really positional, so we should proceed with a full spine MRI. That's the last update that I gave you. You can watch that video here. It was a crying sob fest of me just freaking out that this doctor wanted to order another MRI, a different MRI, anything different other than the last five years of just brain MRIs that I've been getting. I was also crying because I was like, oh my gosh, finally someone's telling me that I don't just have anxiety. Finally, someone is humoring the fact that maybe I have a logical reason to think that symptoms that happen outside of migraine can't all just be attributed to migraine. And symptoms that don't fit migraine should not be classified as migraine. How many times can I say that? During the Sobby Cryfest video, I also let you know that she wanted me to send physical copy CDs of the brain MRI that I got in October without contrast and the brain MRI that I got in February with and without contrast. So I hopped on that, got them sent, and then I was shocked when a couple of weeks later I got an email from her that said the same thing that she told me four years ago. You have to watch that, um, that Cryfest video for this to totally make sense, but she essentially told me a couple weeks after I updated you, sobbing happy tears, that since my brain MRIs from October and February still looked normal, she no longer wants to check me for signs of a CSF leak. Let that sink in. Every time migraine symptoms change dramatically, they wanna do another MRI. So I have had five straight years of yearly normal brain MRIs. She knew that. When we talked in March, she knew that. When we talked in March, she knew that the October and the February still looked normal. Her basis for wanting to do more exploring was from that positive flat test. The only further testing was just another MRI, which is totally non-invasive. So why the heck did seeing these normal MRIs in the flesh make her suddenly not want to pursue looking for a diagnosis for me? I don't remember the exact number, but somewhere around 20 to 30% of brain MRIs for confirmed CSF leak patients are normal. I also know that in between my appointments and my emails with this doctor, she was going and speaking to and consulting with the actual CSF leak specialist. I'd like to reiterate, this is one of those big name specialists who is totally and completely aware with the complications of getting this diagnosis. And I will admit that I totally had hope that this person would look into things. I was not expecting that another normal brain MRI would make them say, oh wow, yeah, no, there's, there's nothing underlying here. I also asked for other diagnostic paths. I said, okay, if not this, then what? Because my symptoms are not matching up with what you've told me. And the other diagnostic paths that were recommended to me were to go to see a neurologist and to go to see an eye doctor. I've already been to like six different neurologists. They all tell me that I have migraine. When I tell them my other symptoms, they say I have complex migraine or complicated migraine. When I tell them that I have migraine symptoms when I don't have a migraine, they say, oh, you're just atypical. Oh, I got an ear bomb. An ear bomb is what I call it when it suddenly sounds like I'm underwater, but also it's a really high pitched ringing sound. Very weird. Okay, what was I talking about? It's very distracting when that happens. Um. Mm, oh yeah, okay. Right, I was talking about the neurologist and the eye doctor. Um, the eye doctor told me that I have signs of high pressure, which I told her in 2017. This was like four and a half years ago, beginning of 2017. So I don't know what going to an eye doctor now would do, because the eye doctor already said something that points to not being consistent with migraine or POTS. Anyway, let's get back to this timeline. Things move slow in my life because I am slow. I take a ton of recovery time. I am triggered by normal everyday life things and then I need to sit and rest for 10 minutes because I had a five minute intellectual conversation. Like everything in my life is very slow. Also, at the same time as all of this, I swear a bunch of crazy is happening. After I did that flat test, suddenly my nausea was like super spiked. I almost feel like doing the flat test gave my body some recovery time that it really needed. 
but now the symptoms are a lot more pronounced. I don't know. Something got weird. Something happened. Everything's different ever since that flat test. Um, in addition, there's more stuff. Early May was when I set up Patreon. We launched that Study H Shop fundraiser for the Service Dog Academy. And there was other personal immediate family stuff that started happening at the beginning of May and continued until now. I think a lot of you guys know my brother was in town for a little while and then my parents. There's some stuff going on in my immediate family that I have not shared here yet. Nothing bad or anything, but it's just stuff that has slowed me down for the last couple of months. There's also one more huge piece to the puzzle that I have not shared on YouTube yet. If you're on Patreon, you already know. Please, no spoilers in the comments. Don't even hint about it. But YouTube, you will find out about that too. That certainly threw a wrench in things. Again, nothing bad, nothing serious. It's just that I guess I just want to reassure you that if there seems like there are holes in my timeline, part of that's a little bit intentional. I don't like that wording. I'm certainly not leaving holes intentionally, but if you see holes, it's because there are details that I'm leaving out intentionally. I feel like I should move back to this side now, but maybe I'll just stay here. Okay, um, other stuff I wanted to mention. Oh, yeah, I did think it was a little bit odd that this neurologist told me to just go to a different neurologist. I mean, she is remote and she's recommending that I go see a neurologist in person. But when I've literally seen like six different neurologists in person in like three different states, I don't understand what another random neurologist is going to do. Call me cynical. I don't see it. I have failed every migraine medication that I am eligible for. The only migraine medication that I have refused to try is the anti-CGRP medication. And that is because the long-term effects aren't known yet since it's so new. And also, we knew at the time that we were going to be starting our family, and so since it needs to build up for some time, we didn't feel like there was a point in doing that, potentially risking the baby that's now born, um, and like I would need to get off it and then restart it. It just didn't make any sense. I also made a video about that. If you want to know exactly why I hard pass on the anti-CGRP medication, go ahead and click on that card. So I've gone through the whole migraine thing. I haven't tried POTS medications because I was pregnant at the time. And now I have learned that POTS is more of a symptom, not its own thing. Like for most people, there is something underlying when there's POTS. So I've been trying to get more to the root, not do this Band-Aid stuff with eat a bunch of salt and wear compression socks. I just, I'm not down to do that for my entire life instead of trying to find something underlying. I want to do them at the same time. I definitely want to manage my symptoms, but why not also look for a cause? But apparently that's just me because none of these doctors have actually recommended that I move forward with other doctors. Exceptions. This neurologist said to go to a neurologist, said to go to an eye doctor, which I've already been to. She didn't recommend anyone in particular. She just said to find one near where I live. I guess technically that's referring and frankly unhelpful because I've already been to both of those as I described earlier when I was sitting here. I'm always losing it. I swear I'm always losing it. You know what? Actually, I always feel like I'm losing it when I'm filming, but it's actually because it's incredibly difficult to talk to yourself for half an hour and make it all make sense. Especially because I need to pay such close attention to things like my sentence structure because I'm going to get random comments from people saying, Oh, you didn't properly say that sentence. Yeah, you know what? I'm trying to properly a lot of things like not be slouching, but I get crap for that too. YouTube guys. Okay, let's focus on what's important. The doctor who called me honey and dropped the F-bomb, she also told me to go to other types of specialists that I have already been to. And then when I said I've been to those types of doctors, she said to go to a naturopath. Didn't have one to recommend. She also said that my nasal drips are allergies. I've never had allergies in my life, and usually they have something to do with the pollen. I would imagine my allergies would match up with my husband's allergies seasonally or, you know, based on our activity outside, but... My allergies are actually positional, and I told her that my allergies also happen when I curve my spine or twist or bend or lift things, and so she told me that I should go to physical therapy for my allergies. She was being dismissive and sarcastic, so I did not heed her suggestions, but for the sake of being totally transparent and honest, I don't want to say that no doctor has recommended any further steps for this diagnosis, because technically she did. I already mentioned that there were a lot of delays between the beginning of May leading into June. Somewhere in mid or late June, I received a letter from the CSF League specialist himself 
saying that there are just too many people in line ahead of me or there are more people who they feel like they can be of more help to. So I have been kind of bumped off of their list of priority and they're gonna be seeing other patients instead who they feel like they can help more. And as much as that sucks for me to hear, that is absolutely what they should be doing. My husband is digging with a hilti in the backyard right now. Let's give him a call and ask if maybe he can jackhammer in 10 minutes. Hi honey, um, is that you jackhammering? Do you think maybe you could pause for like five minutes so I can finish filming? All good. All right, thanks, love you, bye. I'm absolutely glad that that is the way that they're choosing who to see. However, I do wish that back in April when they got my positive flat test and decided that they were gonna look into me, that they would have told me at that point that it was possible they would just drop me in a couple of months. Because between April and now, it's mid-July, and I just got word, that's two or three more months of my life just gone to these conditions. And I don't want to say completely gone, because obviously I'm living, I'm working, the baby is growing, and all of that, but this is time that I didn't need to suffer. And if I had known that it was going to be a dead end, or that there was potential for it to be a dead end, then I probably would have opened some other channels when I felt like I could. When I got that, I'm going to look into you in April, May, whenever I posted that Sabi video, I really truly thought that they were going to look into me at least a bit. There's a certain relief that happens when a doctor says, you know what, I'm gonna look into you. If or if and when a leak wasn't the answer, I was thinking maybe they would look into something else because they gave me that false hope that they saw what I saw. And that's the hardest thing about being chronically ill. You just get passed between doctors, between specialists, and nobody wants to take the time to look into what everybody has said. My phone is blowing up, isn't it? The doctors don't have, I don't know, the time, the patience, the willpower, the critical thinking abilities. I don't mean to be rude, but these guys are supposed to be like the epitome of intelligence and that is just not what I get from them. They're supposed to be all these things, caring and empathetic and really want you to get better and that has not been my treatment in the medical system. Not for my migraine, other than they're more than willing to give me medication and keep seeing me every month. Not when it came to POTS, although they're more than willing to give me medication and keep seeing me every month. I feel like root cause should be step one. I don't feel frustrated right now, but it is frustrating that it's been five years and I'm still just jumping around between people asking like, hey, is there maybe like something genetically that could make me predisposed to all of this stuff? Is there maybe something hormonally where maybe, you know, my thyroid keeps dropping in function every year? Do you think something like that has to do with it? Clearly something is wrong here other than that I get migraines and I have POTS. And I just wish that somebody would kind of like, look. So, a dead end. I don't know where to go from here. I'm feeling quite discouraged. I'm not going to give up. But I don't know what the next step is or when it will be. I don't know. I'll leave you with the very last thing that I sent to my doctor. And that was this. I did tell her that I've seen a handful of neurologists, the tests come back normal, and we don't get past the migraine meds. That's as far as anybody will go with me. I'm paraphrasing here. I told her that migraine as a diagnosis ignores many worrying symptoms that happen outside of migraine. And I also said, we can't know for sure if I have a leak, but I do believe that non-invasive tests are worth doing because I fit the symptoms and the risk factors. I'm diagnosed with complex migraine and POTS, gut issues, Three doctors have said they suspect EDS in my family because the women are flexible and the men are tall. I have a history of chiropractic care. I have bone spurs in my neck. I have at least three substantial hits to the head and two serious spinal whip injuries from gymnastics and each took four to six months to properly heal. She said I fit the symptoms of a spinal CSF leak and I told her that I have two spinal whip injuries from gymnastics that were four to six month healing process injuries and she's still taking back an MRI. Anyway, I said plus the symptoms get worse with changing positions and rounding my back. I wrapped up with, I may only have migraine, but it's a tragedy when patients have a fixable leak and nothing is done to treat that underlying problem. It's a tragedy when patients have an underlying anything, fixable or not, and we don't address that problem. Because let's say this is all, this is hypothetical, but let's say it is all my thyroid. 
We know that. We know the numbers are dropping. We've been watching the numbers drop. Nobody's looking into it. You know what I've been told? My lactation consultant said eat a Brazil nut every couple of days. That's it. My primary doctor isn't looking into it. My neurologist isn't looking into it. Something is broken in there, guys. You want to know how she replied? Unfortunately, I'm not sure that the MRI of your spine will yield the answers you're looking for, especially since your most recent MRI brain did not show signs of a leak. It is a pet peeve of mine when doctors, people, viewers think that me suggesting looking into a diagnosis is me having already self-diagnosed and being like, hey, can you prove me right? No, I'm going in there like begging, telling her, hey, something seems off underneath. I don't know what it is. Here's one thing it could be. Can we look here while you think about other paths we can take? Literally, that's what I'm saying. Like, what are the paths we can look at? I found one, but do you have others? That's what's happening here. They're so convinced. I'm going to get more comments here. Wait for them. That I'm just chasing this diagnosis. That's freaking ridiculous. What I'm chasing is not ignoring my symptoms. That's not a crazy thing to chase. That's not an anxious thing to chase. I'm paying these doctors to tell me why they think I'm sick. They're taking my money and doing nothing and then telling me to take pills. I don't think that they have bad intentions or anything. I don't think that they're only money motivated, but I don't think that the incentives are in place to get patients better. And incentives matter, clearly. Well, like I always say, guys, make sure you listen to your doctor, trust everything that they say. They definitely want you to feel better and they're doing everything they can to make sure that you get on the path to recovery. I'll see you next week.